Turn it back high. The NBA is stranger than we thought. Cost grew, shout out cost grew, man. Let's get it, let's go. say <laughs> hindsight is 2020 well, meaning live, that uh, once something has already happened copy. only then do things become clear as opposed to before or even when you're in the middle of a situation when things aren't so obvious today we're going to be taking a look at some clues that were right under our noses from the very beginning but we didn't take them seriously and connect the dots until after they came to fruition while I really wanted to consider this a clue that we all happened to overlook back in 2017, it's actually just more of a heads up at the end of the day. But that still doesn't take away the fact that we just rolled our eyes and thought this was far-fetched at the time. I mean, LeBron wasn't even on the Lakers yet at that point. While it's still pretty crazy that Bleacher Report hinted at this years before it actually happened, what's even crazier is when an inanimate object predicts the future. Little did we know, this basketball card gave us a free glimpse into the future. What you're looking at is a 2019-2020 Panini Court Kings rookie card of Ruby Hachimura. Bro, you know what's crazy as hell about Cosgrew, bro? Like, I know this bit like, normal, but it's like, I always get that weird, like, scary creep vibe watching this bit. Like, I, I think this bit is supposed to be basketball creepy a little bit, but it's like, shit kind of creepy a little bit, you know what I'm saying? While it might seem like just a random, ordinary card, in a way, it predicted the next team he was going to be on. You see, sports cards usually have not only the player's name on them, but the team name as well, printed somewhere on the card. While this card does in fact have the team he was with at the time on the back of it, it appears like they made a mistake on the front. Because as you can see, it clearly says Lakers above his head. And last time I checked, he wasn't on the Lakers back when he was a rookie, and wasn't going to be for another few few years. At the time, it was considered to be just a harmless error, but I think it's safe to say that nowadays, it can definitely be considered somewhat of an easter egg in hindsight for what would be his next team. This has me questioning nah, is if it was even a mistake at all. Hey, how you more cool? I like how you more, man. He's one of my favorite no international players. Is this 97-98 Skybox Metal Universe Kobe Bryant card? While I could get into how it's very suspicious that for some reason Kobe seems to be the only player from that set to have a Death Star as their background, I think it's smarter if I just focus on the card number. If you guys didn't know, each card from this set has its own individual number assigned to them to show what card that is in the set. And would you look at that? Kobe's card number is none other than 81, meaning that this card is the only one with that number on it. And it's even more crazy when yeah, you realize one. that this card was made way before his legendary 81 point game. Mm. Almost 10 years before that mm. game. So this makes me think that they must have intentionally tailor made this whole design specifically for Kobe. Yes, including the background, which again, no other player from this set seems to have except for Kobe. Oh, Another yeah, example of his future already being written out way in advance. Hey man, Cosgrove, I'm in a room full of open doors. Whoa. Let me shut the fuck up. Hey, positive vibes only. Hey man, I'm finna turn the lights on. I don't know, like, like let's just keep talking about hoop shit. Yeah, man, y'all making me fucking know paranoid now and shit and be found in this yearbook from 1992 when he was in the 8th grade. Kobe, who was just 13 mm. at the time, was asked by one of his friends if he could sign their middle school yearbook, which he did, with the message reading, In a few years, you probably will be dunking on me, not? How about those Lakers? Your friend, Kobe Bryant, number 24. That's right, before he wore the number 33 in high school, he actually wore the number 24 in middle school, mm. which I found to be a pretty interesting fact in and of itself. But the line he wrote before that is what really caught my attention. How about those Lakers? And apparently it caught other people's attention as well. A piece of memorabilia showcasing the late Kobe Bryant's local roots is now on the auction block. It's a yearbook from Balakinwood Middle School and it features an inscription from Kobe. He writes to a classmate, in a few years you probably will be dunking on me. Not. How about those Lakers? Kobe signed it along with his number 24. A Kobe Bryant signed yearbook is so up for auction. Crazy. And what Kobe wrote in this yearbook is, 
absolutely awesome. So when the yearbooks got handed out at the end of the year, I feel like that uh, should be to his family. They should be able to keep that type of stuff. And Kobe wrote, in a few years, think. you will probably be dunking on me. Not. How about not. those Lakers? I'm trying to say not. Kobe, Kobe was already competitive in middle was school. Was he trying to clue us in on something? Or I should say the person he was writing to? It's almost like he was giving him a wink wink if that makes any sense. Keep in mind, this is a Pennsylvania middle school yearbook. So it must have been pretty random to the friend who read this later on. As if he was even supposed to care about the Lakers. I'll tell you one thing. I'm sure he almost shit himself when he found out four years later that mm. Kobe was going to be a Laker. But seriously, was he just unintentionally prophetic or did Kobe somehow already have a hunch of what his future held that, that shit crazy do not go to fabletters.com do not take I Achoo. Mm. it's crazy as niggas you know what Bayless. the Warriors future held Back in 2015, Skip Bayless seemed to know what the Warriors' future held, and this guy appeared to know what the Bucks' future held, commenting this 16 One day the Bucks won a championship, one day. Years ago, but let's be honest, throwing something out the wall just to see if it sticks doesn't exactly make you Nostradamus. In fact, nobody really cares if a random fan or TV personality ends up being wrong. But Steph Curry, on the other hand, can't really afford to just throw something out the wall and hope that it sticks. Fans expect that if a player <laughs> says something, he better back it up and keep his promise. Yes, even if he's just a rookie. You see, the Warriors didn't exactly get off to the best start back in 2009, and on November. November 11th of 2009, following a 108 to 94 loss to the Indiana Pacers, Curry knew that the fans were probably not happy, given the fact that their record was 2 and 5 as a result of that loss, and felt that he had to say something to the fans to ease the pain. This is what he said on Twitter that very night: "Quote, promise to all the Warrior fans, we will figure this thing out. If it's the last thing we do, we will figure it out." Remember, this was only the seventh game of his NBA career. He wasn't obligated to make any promises but in his own words sometimes you just gotta speak into existence but i want to read this tweet that you sent out back on november 11th of 2009 you tweeted out promise all warrior fans we will figure hey shout out steph curry man that, 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 that man he stuck to his word man they won what four titles later can't be mad at him you can't be mad at curry for like being great <laughs> i'm sorry like this thing out it's a it's the last thing we do, we will figure it out. Can you really believe the tweet stuff? Because that's that's a God mode type of tweet right there. That's an all-timer. You have to manifest your reality. Um, yeah. Sometimes you just have to speak it into existence. And, yeah. Um, I might not have known what I was talking about at the time, but <laughs> you remember, best tweet ever. Do you remember sending that out? I don't remember where I was. I definitely remember sending it out, though. But that was a good tweet for sure. When Ed said we, not me. I think it's safe to say that Curry <laughs> has delivered on his promise that he made 14 yeah. years ago. Call me crazy, but I think they Four definitely years? figured it out. Definitely. Now, if you think Most that definitely. tweet is old, former Warriors guard Jason Richardson predicted Legend. something before Curry even donned a Golden State jersey. Like, um, Just four days after Golden State selected Chris Curry Paul in the 2009 <laughs> NBA draft, Richardson worked out with Steph and saw something special in him. And later on that day, just had to share it with Warriors fans. Quote, just got done working out with Steph Curry and Brendan Haywood. Golden State fans, he's going to be really good. And you see this guy playing for Golden State. How long did it take for you to realize, well, this guy's this guy's pretty good? You know what? It didn't take me long. Um, I think a fan. kind of like Chris Paul a little bit. I don't know why, bro. Pulled up a tweet I had back in 2009 uh, when he got drafted to the Warriors, and we was working out together. It was me, him, and Brandon Haywood, and we was working out with our trainer called um, his name is Don Rabbit. And I sent a tweet out. I said. Hey, Warrior fans, Stephen Curry is going to be really good. <laughs> so uh, I knew it right then, back then, the first time I saw him with my own eyes coming out of Davidson, the way he just shot the ball in the workout, uh, it was something I'd never seen before. Shit crazy. Shit, I was, hey, he won. Hey, you can't be mad at Steph Curry. Four rings later, um, he, he did it. He did it, man. It's he my did sister. it. He did it. You know? Uh, so you just got to respect the player, man. Who, who backed this shit up? Damn, that was it. Uh, I think the Kobe shit was... Oh God. Ah. No, no disrespect. Um, tweaking. 
I meant to say, oh my god. You know, well, okay. This is okay. If you hear me in real life, I'm trying to be less cussative on YouTube. If you hear me talk, I'm not cussing about certain things. It's not to be disrespectful or anything or talk down or be bad. It's just how I be talking. So I, I don't want to come off as wrong. So that, 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 that's me. No disrespect. But yeah. Um, but yeah, the Kobe the Kobe thing was crazy. It, it was um yeah it was a little concerning. Um, but yeah, that was.